Hi, this is Aries here in Beijing, and today's Aries Talk, we'll be talking about a private key and public key. How do they work? Let's get it started. Before we start here, you need to get ready for this new kind of user account system. Since we're so used to the traditional user account system, such as your social media accounts, your bank accounts, and, and your Netflix accounts, and among all those different types of user accounts, the most important one is your bank account. And a typical a bank account is made of a username, a password, or account number, and a PIN code for your debit card or credit card. But for cryptocurrency, you get a pair of keys, a private key and public key. You see, that's where people get confusing. A private key look like something like this, and a public key look like something like that. They don't look like anything for you at the very beginning, right? They're not readable. They look like something went wrong on your computer, you know, your, when the computer could not process the information. They are not readable files, and they just look really confusing for you. So using bank account as an example, if you forget your password or your PIN code for your bank account, it's not going to be a big deal. You can still go to the bank, showing them your identification, and reset your password and PIN code. And your asset will still be there, you know, it's not going anywhere. So in the bank system, the bank works as a central authority, takes care of your property, and the banks are responsible for what happens. If anything goes wrong, the banks will be responsible. In the centralized system, as the client or the user, you grant the power to the bank, which allows them to freeze your account any time when they decide it's necessary to do so. In country, in cryptocurrency, you are responsible for protecting your digital asset. If you lost the private key, all the property stored in the blockchain, for you, they are gone permanently. The consequence of loss of your private key is irreversible. Since the network is decentralized, if as long as you hold your private key, you have your digital asset in control. They will always be yours. As for asymmetric encryption, ECC, elliptic curve encryption, SHA-256, whatsoever, they really don't matter to you. Think about it. When you use an email, when you send a message, do you think about how your message are encrypted and go through a process called a SSL, HTTP, whatsoever? Give yourself a break. You're using the tool, not starting the tool. And now I would like to emphasize some information that actually matter to you. So let's get seriously. What is private key? The most important thing when it comes to secure your digital asset is protecting your private key. That's the most important thing, period. As I mentioned, the private keys and public keys, they are not made of readable text. So it actually causes a lot of trouble when you transfer them or store them. It's very hard to make sure they're intact. That's why a better user-friendly solution comes out. It is called a C's phrase. Basically, they are made of 12 English letters, like a secret phrase. You can just memorize them in exact order, or you can just write it down in a piece of paper. That is an example of a C's phrase. So C's phrase is basically equivalent to a private key. It is generated by your private key. It can be converted back into a private key. As long as you're protecting very well, you will always have access to your private key and your digital asset will be safe. As for public key, the relationship between those two are a little bit complicated in a mathematical way. So in cryptocurrency, a private key is like a password, but it's so much more. And a public key, actually pretty simple, is like the address or the account number for your bank account. Imagine you're living on the street and you own a house and a property with it. If someone wants to send a stuff, they can just write down the address, which is your public address, is the number of your house, they can drop the stuff in there. In order to claim that stuff, and the physical key that can be used to open your door is the private key. So the physical key is like your private key. You can just use the key to open the door, then you can claim all the property in the house. Of course, in reality, the mechanism is way more complicated than that. It involves computer science and cryptography. If you're interested in those kind of topics, there are tons of materials out there. You can just check it out. 
That's all I want to share for today's Aries Talk. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment. And see you guys next episode.